This video is aimed at receptionists using EMIS Web Appointments. The focus is on using the appointment book to manage the daily appointments, and this video is accompanied by another one which looks at finding and booking appointments. It does not look at the configuration and management of the appointment book, which will be covered in a separate video. As a receptionist, your default view of the appointment book will be the appointment sessions for that day. The sessions for each session holder on duty will be displayed in separate columns across the screen, and you'll often need to scroll left to right to view all appointment lists. The session holders will be displayed according to the session holder filter that you've selected in the bottom left corner. As you can see, there's a range of filters available, which are all created at organisation level. To select which session filters appear for you, go to Appointments Config on the ribbon, and then into Your Session Holder Filters. Here, you can choose which of the pre-configured filters you want to have available to you. As receptionist, it's obviously likely that you'll need to access most appointment lists. As we go back to the appointment book, you can see the two filters that I selected now appear as options in the My Session Holder Filters list in the bottom left here. By default, session headers are in blue like this, but there's an option for practices to have different coloured session header bars for different locations, for example, for branch surgeries. So in some practices, these may be different colours. Indeed, there's a lot of configuration options for appointment slots too, which enable the practice to use different coloured backgrounds, different coloured text, different icons in the appointments book. So you'll need to become familiar with how these are used in your practice. Here are some examples. You can see in this sample session that the appointment slots are mostly default appointment slots with no extra labels or colours, but with some blocked slots here to allow for catching up, and with the last four slots being marked as telephone consultations, which have a pale yellow background and a telephone icon to the left. In this sample session, we have templates of slots reserved for baby immunisations, travel vaccinations and diabetes clinics, as well as a block of time marked out for MDT meetings. Some slots might have an embargo placed on them, meaning they can only be booked within a certain time period before the appointment date or time. So you may see text like this in some slots, indicating that an embargo is in place and displaying when it lifts so that those slots can be used. Another symbol you may see in the status column is this red arrow. This is used to indicate that the appointment has been booked as a remote consultation appointment. It means that it's been booked by another organisation, for example another practice, for one of their patients. The slot will behave differently if this is the case, and we cover these slots and remote consultations in general in a separate video called EMIS Remote Consultations, Finding, Booking and Cancelling Appointments. This patient facing services icon here is used to mark appointment slots that are available for patients to book online. When configuring these slot types, practices have a wide range of colours and icons to choose from, so your practice slot types could look very different from these. To view your practice slot types, Go to the Appointments Config option in the ribbon, select Organisation Options and Slot Types, and you can see the full list. A different list type is also displayed on this page, the Home Visit List. This list doesn't have times associated with each slot, and enables patients to be added to the list in the order in which they're assigned as requiring a home visit. This type of list could also be used for open appointment sessions, where patients turn up at any time between the start and finish time of the session, they can then be added to the list in the order in which they arrive. So, as patients booked into sessions, we can see that the patient details overwrites the text that was in the slot, but the icon to the left of the slot remains, so you can still see the type of slot. If you hover over the patient's name, you'll see more information about the patient and the booked slot, name and EMIS number, calling name if they've got one recorded, date of birth, the reason, details of the slot itself, so the type of slot and its time and duration, and any booking notes. Now let's take a look at how you can configure some of the elements of the appointment book by revisiting the appointment config option in the ribbon. You can have the patient's EMIS number displayed next to their name on the appointment list. You can show an alert if a patient has not arrived by the time their appointment is due. You can configure the display of the different slot colours to either colour the whole row apart from the status and time sections which is how we have it set at the moment, or change it to having only the status and time section displaying the colour. I'll change to that option so you can see how it looks. We can see that my user options already show the waiting time for patients. Displaying the patient facing services icon lets you know which appointments were booked by the patients themselves online. And lastly in this section, you can opt to display the patient's calling name in the appointment slot 
instead of their first name as shown in the registration details. If we leave appointment config for now and return to our session, we can see that the colour markings have now changed as we selected and only the time and status sections are coloured. There's now a red alert icon indicating patients who haven't arrived yet but it's past the start of their appointment and the calling name is now displayed. If you right click on an appointment slot, you can view amongst other options that we're going to return to, slot properties which gives you two tabs with information about the slot itself and the booking of that slot. So we can see here, for example, who booked the slot and when, and slot history, which gives you a full breakdown of every action that has been performed on that slot, going right back to the creation of it. So what happens when a patient arrives for their appointment? If you have patient arrival technology at your practice, the patient may record themselves as having arrived, or they may still come to reception. To manually record that a patient's arrived, you highlight their appointment slot, and either press A on the keyboard or right click on the slot, select change slot status and then select A for arrive. Obviously the keyboard option is quicker. This will place an A next to the patient's name on the appointment list and the session holder can now see on their screen in the consulting room that the patient's arrived. When the session holder is ready to see the patient, they'll select S for send in or you can right click on the slot, select change slot status and then select send in. This places an S in the status column when the patient leaves the consultation, the session holder will record that by selecting L for left. On reception, you'll be able to see these statuses changing and could use these statuses to know whether a session holder has a patient in with them at the time, for example, or that their last patient has left but their next patient hasn't arrived or hasn't been sent in. As patients are marked left, their names are also crossed off the list. If a patient doesn't attend for their appointment, then they can be marked as having DNA'd manually using the right click change status option. But many practices will have configured their appointment books to automatically DNA patients after a certain time period has passed since their appointment was due. So you'll notice the letter D appearing in the status column for these patients. The last option to mention in the status column is the letter W, which you'll need to use to indicate that a patient walked out having previously been marked as arrived, but having not been called in to see the session holder yet. Any slot status can be cancelled by highlighting the slot, typing C or right clicking on the slot and opting to cancel slot status under the change slot status option. If you need to inform the session holder of anything, either relating to a patient or not, you can use comments. These show as pale yellow bars immediately below the slot to which they're added. You can add a comment by right clicking the slot and choosing add comment after this slot. These comments can be edited or deleted on the right click too. Before we finish, let's run through some of the other features that you'll come across during normal day-to-day -day usage as a receptionist. In appointments config, you can see that there are options to define when you want your afternoon to start and also to give a time limit in minutes for when you want sessions to close down. I'll leave these as 1 p.m. and zero minutes. And if we go back to the appointment book, we can see these settings demonstrated here where the morning appointment sessions have closed and are now just represented with the blue header. If I want to view these appointments, I still can. I just need to open them by clicking on the double arrow icon to the right in the header. Likewise, I can close any sessions I don't want by clicking on that icon on an open session. It's also possible for you to force a reason to be entered whenever you book an appointment and also whenever you cancel an appointment. Back to the ribbon options, you can select to look only at morning or afternoon with all day being the default. The privacy option removes patient identifiable information from the screen, replacing it with the EMIS number and should be used whenever there's a chance that a patient or anyone else present who shouldn't be viewing patient information might be able to see your screen. Also relating to patient privacy, if you're required for any reason to access the patient's record from their appointment slot, you may find that some patients have confidentiality policies applied to their records. And this means that when you try to access their records, you may be presented with a consent box to confirm that you have consent to access those records. Responses to these consent questions are recorded and added to the audit trail. So be sure you have the appropriate consent before you access these. If in doubt about accessing records protected by confidentiality policies, check with your practice manager for local protocols. You may be asked to change the properties of an appointment slot during a session. For example, if a session holder asks for their usual break slot to be moved to a later time, or if you wish to block out a slot. 
To do this, right click on the slot in question, select slot properties. You can then select a different option from the slot type drop down list or click on the blocked option here. Blocked slots can't be booked into by anyone, whereas other slot types can be overwritten if a slot's urgently required. If a patient needs to check the date of their appointment, you can use the patient appointments option in the ribbon. Identify the patient in the patient find dialog and you'll be presented with a list of all that patient's future, past and cancelled appointments. You can also use the search book option in the ribbon to find patients by name, particularly useful if you've got a large busy appointment book. If your role includes printing out appointment lists for business continuity, for example, or for visits, there are two useful options. You can use the print option in the ribbon, which will give you the options to select a date or date range and times. So the print option is not just limited to today's appointments. Specify which session holders to include. This defaults to all, but you can select individual session holders using this spyglass. Include patient details on your list. Print assigned lists which relates to a separate function called scheduled appointments, which we're not covering in this video. Or to print out an individual session list, you can right click on the session header and choose print session, which gives you the option to include patient details or not. The printout's a simple table, which includes the slot time, patient's name, reason, and any booking notes. If you opt to include patient details, you'll get the date of birth and contact numbers for the patient as well. Finally, if you need to cancel a session, you have various options to choose from. Right clicking on the session header gives you the option to cancel or reassign. As there are patients booked into the session, this dialog box appears displaying the booked patients and giving you these options. Assign another session holder for the session, which you can use if the session has not already gone past its start time. Cancel the session and move the booked appointments to the reallocation list, or cancel the session and cancel the booked appointments. Opting to move the patients to a reallocation list creates a special list of these patients, which can then be viewed by selecting the reallocation list option from the ribbon. Here, you'll see the patients who are on the cancelled session list. You'll also notice that that cancelled session list has disappeared from the appointment book now. You can view information about the original appointment and the activity for the reallocation slot by right-clicking and viewing slot properties and slot history and it's possible to remove the patient from the slot without booking them into a new appointment by selecting delete from this menu. But to reallocate the patient from this list to a new appointment slot, right click and select cut and find the appointment you want to book them into on this page or any other page and right click on the slot and select either paste or paste and print. You'd use paste and print if you want to print a standard appointment slip or letter, for example. It does sometimes take a while for the patient's name to appear in the new slot, so you just need to be patient here. The patient's now been removed from the reallocation list. Returning to the options for cancellation and reallocation, you can see that there's also an option to print letters for all patients here. For example, if you're cancelling all the appointments and wish to send a letter out to all patients. Below this, there's a notifications box, which is ticked by default if one or more of the patients on the list have opted for SMS appointment notifications, as recorded in their registration details. You can view the default cancellation message here and edit it if you want to before sending it to all patients with SMS notifications turned on. But you'll need to remember to check that patients without SMS notifications are sent a letter or contacted accordingly. So that's our overview of EMIS Web appointments from a receptionist's point of view. Thank you.